is sad. And it comes as the FBI has confirmed it's monitoring extensive online chatter about armed protests. Our own Griff Jenkins joins us live in Washington, D.C. with more on the security measures. Griff, I know you, you say it looks unprecedented. It does. It's surreal. Pete Ainsley, Steve, good morning to you. Driving in this morning, seeing the 21,000 National Guard troops from seven states. They have this shining city on a hill locked down from the Capitol to the White House. You would have asking four tips and any help you can give them in identifying the person or persons responsible for the death of Officer Brian Signick. You can call them 1-800-CALL-FBI. Pete Ainsley, Steve. All right. Uh, and the phone's been ringing off the hook tens of thousands of tips already. Griff, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we just heard uh, there's on, a concerning online chatter. Apparently, officials are worried about the violence, not only at our U.S. Capitol and at the White House, perhaps, but at 50 state capitals all across the country. And extremists are calling on their followers to loot, loot and burn buildings and engage in uh, some sort of violence, physical violence. Uh, social media, ever since the January 6th attack, has removed a number of those webs, uh, a number of the people who were involved in coordinating uh, attacks, but that has made it harder, Ainsley, to track these guys to figure out what they're trying to do. Come coming starting Sunday. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they were going to have the rehearsal for the inauguration on Sunday, but out of an abundance of caution, they're going to move it to Monday. Yeah, they had to postpone it because of all of these scares. Amtrak has heightened their security because the largest union of rail workers has requested that because they're worried about what this means for Inauguration Day travel into D.C. The D.C. metro stations are going to close more than a dozen stations around. Bipartisan but, family. That's right. A reminder that this is indeed also a virtual inauguration yeah. so crowds are being discouraged from 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 stay coming away. to washington dc stay home and the size of the force of national guards and 20,000 at this point is an overwhelming show of force and i think talking to people that are there as well as much a reflection you've been on the streets of dc i've been there before when it felt like an encampment outside lafayette square outside the white house when there were the black lives matter protests in in may and june um, and it felt under siege at that moment i can only imagine what it looks like right now but when you talk to people on the ground with the number of troops there at time where we you know violence is wrong you should not participate no matter what the cause is Miranda Devine though made an interesting point she is a columnist for the New York Post often on mm -hmm. our show and she said it's interesting because it's so hypocritical the left didn't want law and order they wanted to fund police but now they want the protection listen to this you saw House Democrats on Wednesday when they're voting to impeach Donald Trump again, pointlessly, and, and they are one after the other talking about how great the police are. You know, suddenly they're for police, suddenly they're for... Just not very long ago, they were demonizing police as white supremacists and racists. Of course, moments like this are very clarifying. The one that she added as well, which is not in that clip, is suddenly walls are very important and they recognize that they do work. And, and police manning those walls prevent people from, that are not supposed to come in from coming in. And, and I think the hearing members of Congress on both sides of the aisle, but mostly coming from from Democrats lauding the heroism of Capitol Hill police, which they should. Mm -hmm reminds you how disconnected they are from the lives of average people who don't have police surrounding their business all day long right. and are grateful for the fact that they can pick up the phone and call them and, and in three or four or five minutes they'll show up to defend the livelihood they have. Have. That was dismissed for months. Suddenly, Democrats have now found that appreciation. It took a siege of Capitol. And they're praising the police officers who are now arresting all those individuals yes. that went into the Capitol. Well, because all those members of Congress were actually in Congress when the mob was on the outside. Was and, and a lot of them felt like. Uh, oh, maybe it's the first time their bubble was burst. And, and these business owners who live on the <laughs> you streets. You never want a bubble being over. burst like that. No, again. of course not. I'm not, ration I'm not rationalizing. But if you live in a gated community with personal security, Security all the time. You don't know what it's like to have yeah. your city block burned down and police screamed at and told they're the enemies. Well, it was a terrifying day, uh, and let's hope that never happens again. Mm -hmm. um, Project Veritas with James O'Keefe. Um, they've been looking at 
the big social media companies as we have, and because they become so powerful, turns out there are a number of people inside Twitter who have been feeding undercover surveillance video uh, back to James O'Keefe, showing him exactly what's going on inside Twitter. And at the, on the same day, last week, same day that Twitter banned Donald Trump permanently, uh, it turns out Twitter was looking to the future. They banned Donald Trump, and you know what? They're not done. Listen to this as he talks about widespread censorship at uh, Twitter. The campaign just kicking off. We, you know, we, we are focused on one account right now, but this is going to be much bigger than just one account. And it's going to go on for much longer than just this day, this week, or the next few weeks. It's going to go on beyond the inauguration. So the focus is certainly on this account and uh, how it ties to real world violence, but also we need to think much longer term around how these dynamics play out over time. Um, I don't believe this is going away anytime soon. A much broader approach um, that we should be looking at um, and, and going deeper on. Uh, he, uh, James O'Keefe, said that apparently uh, a dozen employees have been feeding him mm -hmm. uh, snippets of inside information. More than a dozen, actually. Yeah. Um, what's interesting, in the transcript there, uh, the words he said uh, that the one account was real Donald Trump. That's what uh, James O'Keefe said. Uh, in the same conversation, he was talking as well about extre an extremist group that they have excised from Twitter as well. So, you know, they, they, are, uh, they are censoring at Twitter. Yeah, James O'Keefe, the founder of Project Veritas, he was on with Sean Hannity last night. Watch this. They're explicitly saying they're going to be censoring days, weeks in the future. I believe these, these tech companies, and I'm sure you may believe this too, have more power than government, for government distributes their messaging through these platforms. And I think a lot of people are upset and the courage uh, that these whistleblowers are demonstrating is courageous. I'm trying to get them to go on the record. I, I believe I may have one who may be willing to do that. Um, we'll see how Twitter responds to this one, Sean, and then we'll be releasing more tapes showing them talking about doing a retro, retrospective, going back in time, deleting accounts, and uh, identifying exactly what type of language they deem right. unacceptable, which is really more mainstream conservative uh, thought. These whistleblowers are so brave. I mean, they risk losing their jobs if they're caught. There are 5,400 people that were on that call mm -hmm. with Twitter, so it might be hard for, for Jack Dorsey or anyone there to figure out who did this. But they are shedding light on something that we've all been worried about, that big tech does have so much power, as, as he was saying, as James O'Keefe is saying. Um, but this really goes back to the 75 million people that voted for Trump, and it's trying to silence the conservative voice. When you look at Parler, what they did with Parler, mm -hmm. when you look at they're not going to give contributions, campaign dollars to certain Republicans anymore. It's very scary as to how this is going to affect you because they're trying to shut down voices so that you don't know the full story and you can't make a decision based on truth. As Jack Dorsey said, there's a much broader approach that we should be looking at. James O'Keefe said it's more even mainstream conservatism. And you mentioned, yes, there are whistleblowers and yes, it takes courage, but that was a call with 4,600 employees. You, can, you can't have an expectation these days that yeah. words like that are probably not not going to get out. I was surprised for such a... So it's yeah. not a yep. secret what right. he was saying. He's saying, we banned Donald Trump and we, yeah, it's about one account, but we're going further than that because, you know, that's just a symptom of a bigger problem right. we need to crush. You know what? Uh, when you look at the numbers, though, it, it does paint the picture of who is running Silicon Valley. So out of, out of 4,600 people on the call... Twelve were <laughs> upset? <laughs> right. And they're the ones leaking to these guys? <laughs> Crazy. Well, when you look at the campaign contributions, that's not surprising. No. I mean, not. they live in California. They're big tech. Most of them are super young, which mm -hmm. is more of a liberal base. And if you look at the contributions of these companies, the majority of them are Democrats giving to Democratic candidates. That's oh, true. Well, yesterday, uh, uh, Joe Biden announced his almost $2 trillion stimulus plan. It includes stimulus checks. It included yeah. a lot of things. But w one of the things that wasn't mentioned a lot was whether businesses will be allowed to open up. You talked to a lot of these businesses, restaurants, gyms. They're 
helping others. state and local governments. They're helping state and local governments, and we'll get to that topic of what Joe Biden wants a federal money to go to. But there's a lot of little guys out there, yeah. businesses who've been struggling through COVID-19 to try to stay open. Uh, one of them is Attila's Gym, and we've talked about it a lot You've on been this there program. Live. I've been there live when they first had this to say to Tucker, guys. He said, this information is not accurate. The state has not seized their bank account funds. However, the state has obtained judgments against the owners and intends to collect on them. The total due and owing is a result of court entered judgments to date is $134,000 and change. Whether that affects the entire balance of the gym's funds is a question to ask right. the bank. Sounds like a lot of legalese for we took your money. Right. Uh, apparently, they had $175,000 in the bank. It's wow. gone just like that. Um, they, the, the gym says it was part of their legal defense fund. And they're in the middle of litigation and mid-appeal. So how, how dare them? Let us explain why the state feels that they owe, uh, that they can go ahead and take that. In New Jersey, where Pete and I live, uh, gyms have to follow the COVID rules. And one of the rules is you got to wear a mask there. At that gym, they say you don't need to wear a mask. And so what's happening? That gym is being fined $15,000 a day. Day. A day. It's just a crazy amount. So what they say now is, uh, you know what? If anybody gives us money for a legal defense, we're going to just keep it in cash so they can't get it. So why did they take all of it then? I, I think I don't think they should have taken any of it until the appeals process is well, over. And they they're find still out. open. But listen Another to this. I, I know, but that's not fair. That's that's taking money that they haven't been fined for yet. Maybe that's why we're talking about it. It's not fair. But they, he had 173 thousand in his account. They took it all. He says. And he only owes 130, not only, but he owes 134,000. So why'd they take 173? Because if you add $15,000 a day, every it rationalization adds up. Yeah, but what would if they up? decided tomorrow they're going to close? It's not the government's money yet. Correct. And that's why the other point he made was in other situations where rent isn't paid, it right. usually takes years for that right. to be Plus, before there's any garnishing of bank accounts. This is a targeting of one business Phil Murphy doesn't like because King Murphy gets what he wants during COVID. He wants to shut you down. He'll shut you down. And here's the thing. Ultimately, a court could find in their favor Correct. and they got to give all the money back. But then they might have to shut down again because all the money is gone. And then what? What? Oh, man. <laughs> you see that? And getting, like, gov and getting money from the government. That's really easy. Oh, that's a snap, isn't it? <laughs> man, oh, man, what a mess. Anyway. All right. We've got more stories this morning, including this coming up as big tech censors conservatives. We know that Comrade Cortez going to step further saying Congress should get into the crackdown business, why the left could soon be bringing 1984 to 2021. You need to start at the top, like any counterterrorism effort. Debathification yeah. of the Republican Party. There are millions of Americans who somehow need to be deprogrammed. We're going to have to figure out how we reign in our media environment. It's time to be deprogrammed from praising big tech censorship to a comrade Cortez calling to, quote, rein in the free press. There's a reason why George Orwell's classic 1984 is still topping Amazon's bestseller list this week. Here to break down the left's latest attempts to reshape America, senior policy analyst for the Independent Women's Forum, Patrice Anwuka. Patrice, thanks so much for being here this morning. Of course, authoritarianism doesn't have to morning, just come Pete. from government. It can come from corporations and from big tech and from elsewhere. When you listen to the Congresswoman from New York, Comrade Cortez, talk about a commission to rein in the media. What does that say to you? What's that a preview of? Oh, it's absolutely a preview of the censorship, of the silencing of any sort of uh, free thought in this country. And by free, free thought, I mean anyone who does not fall in line with their far left, even left leaning talking points, messaging policy positions. Pete, it's dangerous. It's telling all of the, the people, the 70, oh, 70 plus million Americans who think differently, whether you supported the president as a person or his policies, that somehow, 
you are wrong. Somehow there's something mentally wrong with you. And suppression of, 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 of the press is exactly what we don't need right now. We actually need a marketplace of ideas uh, and news outlets that, 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 that present different sides of, of the story and also don't uh, hide certain news items. But it, it's interesting she's coming directly for Fox and for others. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we, we see exactly what she's trying to do. Well, it's the socialism of speech. Either you believe in one avenue of what can be talked about, acceptable content, or you believe in the free market of ideas and more speech is what counters speech you don't like. But let's move on to social media as well, because we saw the leader of the free world banned not just from Twitter, but Facebook and Instagram. Even he couldn't go on Shopify or Pinterest if he wanted to. So you've got the unpersoning, yeah. which is an Orwellian phrase, erasing a person from the ability to speak. And then you also have Parler being removed from Amazon, Google, Apple. So entire platforms where free speech is supposed to exist also poof. What does that say? Well, first, Pete, I, Pete, I'd have to say that, you know, we have to understand where free speech uh, is provided. And that's provided by the Constitution. And then it's provided, it, it's protection against the government infringing on those rights. Now, a private platform could potentially say, hey, I'm not the government and I have the right to uh, censor. I have the right to do anything to your speech and it's part of my speech. But if you're pretending to be a place where there's, <clears throat> excuse me, a, an exchange of ideas, an open forum, then you actually have to live up to that. And it, it's, it's scary when we hear Jack Dorsey, we, we were just saying, wow, he's being thoughtful, saying, you know what, the actions that Twitter took recently, um, you know, sets a dangerous precedent. And then now we see he's actually, that was kind of a farce. In fact, he's saying the purge, the Twitter purge agenda has just begun. And that is what I think concerns so many people, myself and many conservatives who say, well, wait a minute. Why can't we have the ideas that we do? Why do we all have to think the way that, that you <laughs> say we should? Whether you being AOC, government lawmaker, or you being a big tech company. That is eroding the diversity that makes America so great. Ah, diversity of thought. That pesky idea which doesn't exist on <laughs> camp college campuses either. We're out of time, but we could also go to the point that companies are now, and major op-ed pages now telling companies, if you hire Trump officials, we'll cancel you too. So it's meant to follow everyone into civilian life. But we have to leave it right there. Patrice Unwaka, thank you so much for your time. Great insights. Thank you, Pete. You got it. All right, still ahead. From impeachment to big tech censorship and the unknowns of a new administration, our panel of moms weighs in on the state of the nation. Has it been a long year and it's only mid-January, so what do moms think of where our country is and where we are going? Joining me now, our panel of moms, Kareth Foster, she's the founder of, of University Solutions and a mother of two. We have Kim Alfano, she is a mother of a 15-year-old daughter, and Lily Gil Valletta is a mother of two. Hey, ladies. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Kareth, I'll start with you. Where do you think our country is going? What does the future look like? Oh, my gosh. This was supposed to be dry January, right? <laughs> right. Um, no one's doing this that point, this year. Right? <laughs> at this point, it's looking um, pretty pretty dreary, um, not just because it's January, but because we are more divided than ever. It looks like, you know, the dog and pony show in Washington uh, trying to, you know, impeach the president again. You know, I, I feel like Senate should be concentrating on COVID-19 relief. Um, you know, there are families who are hungry. There are people who don't know how they're going to pay their bills. There are people who want vaccines who aren't able to get them. Uh, we got a lot more going on than than the man who has five more days at his, at his desk. Yeah, Kim, how about you? What are your concerns? Uh, I'm concerned at, at just the, the temperature of this country and the mm -hmm. fact that um, that we can't let, you know, that I can't have conversations with my dear friends and my own family um, without it devolving into something horrible. Um, you know, you can see, uh, I sent you guys a picture, my child is a Biden Harris supporter and I'm not. And we, you know, we have to learn how to make that work in a pandemic trapped in the same house. And, uh, and I, and I think that people need to look to our example that we haven't killed each other yet. Right. Um, and, and I, and I think it's just, it, Although I'm hopeful because we always do seem to, as a country, come together eventually and, and fix things. But right now it's bleak. So what do you tell your daughter? Um, you know, we have an agreement that she's allowed to have whatever position she wants as long as she can defend it. 
um, right. as long as she can tell me why she thinks that. And it's not just my, you know, group think. Right. Um, because everybody else thinks that way. And she's pretty articulate. Her dad is a, I'm a Republican media consultant and her dad is a Democrat media consultant. Wow. So um, she's grown up in a divided house uh, and she's learned how to articulate her opinions. I, I can't tell her it's wrong for her to want to care about people because she cares about the environment, cares about uh, health care, cares about things that when you're 15, um, seem black and white. Right. Uh, and I, I'm not against all of that. I think it's, it's laudable. Um, but it's the old saying, you know, if you're not a Democrat when you're 20 or you have no heart, when you're not a Republican, when you're 40, you have no brain. <laughs> right. I'm waiting for her to grow up a little bit. And get a job. She can, yeah. She can be your husband's child for the beginning. And then at the end, maybe she'll change. All right, Lily, Lily, how about you? How is this everything affecting you and your family? Well, I'll tell you, Ainsley, I had a pivotal moment last week when one of my sons looked at the TV and asked me, Mommy, is that in the United States or is it Venezuela? You wow. know, you know, I'm Latin and and he understands what's happening in Venezuela. And I was like, oh, no, what's happening? It's the middle of the day. We're watching news together because we work from home together. Everybody's here. And that was really unsettling for me. I'm like, what is happening? We need to come together, rise above the political bickering. We need more homes like the other mom's home here that that is able to have conversations. Mm -hmm. And just I never thought I was going to have to explain that to my son and, mm -hmm. and try to make it the positive twist of, you know what? There's diversity of thought. We not all agree, but sh we should be able to be civil. And, and by no means we should have references of the greatest country, the United States, to other places that historically have not been places of freedom. So that was really unsettling for me, Ainsley. Yeah, we can all relate to that. And I mean, you've been on our show a lot talking about what your family has gone through and we see the images, but you, you know, your family has lived it. And so, you know, more than anyone that that give, gave me chills when you said that, that your son thought that was another country. I thought it was Venezuela. Uh, Kareth, you were in the movie No Safe Spaces. What are what's your opinion about silencing free speech or talking about doing that? And we're seeing what's happening on social media. Right. I, I'm not just a fan of free speech. I've actually dedicated a significant part of my life to it. I, I founded a nonprofit called Frame, the Foster Russell Alliance for Meaningful Expression, which takes programming that promotes free speech, inclusion, diversity of thought, and social change to college and university campuses, because that is definitely under threat. And I think we are in a very very dangerous situation right now with these big tech companies threatening to, well, pulling people off. Um, and here's the thing, what you're going to do is actually um, convert people who thought that they thought one way to another way because they're going to wonder what you're trying to hide. Next thing, you're going to drive people who we should be looking at underground. And that's not good for anybody. It's certainly not good for our country. And it certainly does nothing to bring us together in a unified form as the United States. Mm -hmm. Kim, how does it affect you and your profession? Well, I, I mean, it's hard because I, I think censorship of any kind is terrible. But at the same time, what happened at the Capitol and the irresponsible use of, of media and social media is fueling a lot of the hatred that's running around the country. So, uh, you know, I'm I, I'm so torn. I think censorship is wrong at whenever it happens, even if I hate what the other person is saying. But I also want to find a way. It's, it's kind of the, the symptom, not the problem. I want to find a way that we can have heated conversations without um, having to, you know, say that we want to hang people or, right. or tear down the Capitol or, I mean, I think we have a much, much bigger problem than, than even the censorship would, would belie. So I don't know. I, it's, it's outrageous and hard. I mean, what I try to do in, in my political ads and in my work is have an intellectual conversation like I would have with my kid, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and try to take it down a notch. Um, I love a lot of Democrats. I, I, they're my dearest friends. Um, I love that we can have conversations. I wish that was the case across the country. I think most of us agree with you on that. I think more of us are in the middle, but it's just the fringe right and fringe left that, uh, you know, that they are writing Why some horrible things. things. I know, I know. All right, Lily, um, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. What's the future of the Republican Party now? Well, there's a time. Th this is the moment for reinvention, for showing that it is the party of opportunity and of law and order, and actually the one that can reach across the aisle. Because right now will be the moment to demonstrate that with the new administration. So I am hopeful. I'm hearing a different, you know, tone. 
but there is need to reset and a reset not to erase the past but look forward and come together truly rising above politics because it's about the people. Kareth, Kem, Lily, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Ainsley. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Still ahead, thousands of National Guards. Boy, has it been a long year, and it's only mid-January. So what do moms think of where our country is and where we are going? Joining me now, our panel of moms, Kareth Foster. She's the founder of, of University Solutions and a mother of two. We have Kim Alfano. She is a mother of a 15-year-old daughter, and Lily Gil Valletta is a mother of two. Hey, ladies. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Kareth, I'll start with you. Where do you think our country is going? What does the future look like? Oh, my gosh. This was supposed to be dry January, right? <laughs> right. Um, no one's doing this that point, this year. Right? <laughs> at this point, it's looking um, pretty pretty dreary, um, not just because it's January, but because we are more divided than ever. It looks like, you know, the dog and pony show in Washington uh, trying to, you know, impeach the president again. You know, I, I feel like Senate should be concentrating on COVID-19 relief. Um, you know, there are families who are hungry. There are people who don't know how they're going to pay their bills. There are people who want vaccines who aren't able to get them. Uh, we got a lot more going on than than the man who has five more days at his, at his desk. Yeah, Kim, how about you? What are your concerns? Uh, I, I'm concerned at, at just the, the temperature of this country and the mm -hmm. fact that um, that we can't let, you know, that I can't have conversations with my dear friends and my own family um, without it devolving into something horrible. Um, you know, you can see, uh, I sent you guys a picture, my child is a Biden-Harris supporter and I'm not. And we, you know, we have to learn how to make that work in a pandemic trapped in the same house. And uh, and, I, and I think that people need to look to our example that we haven't killed each other yet. Right. Um, and, and, I, and I think it's just... It, I, although I'm hopeful because we always do seem to, as a country, come together eventually and, and fix things. But right now, it's bleak. So what do you tell your daughter? Um, you know, we have an agreement that she's allowed to have whatever position she wants as long as she can defend it. Um, right. As long as she can tell me why she thinks that, and it's not just my, you know, group think, right? Um, because everybody else thinks that way. And she's pretty articulate. Her dad is a. I'm a Republican media consultant, and her dad is a Democrat media consultant. Wow. So um, she's grown up in a divided house, uh, and she's learned how to articulate her opinions. I, I can't tell her it's wrong for her to want to care about people because she cares about the environment, cares about uh, health care, cares about things that when you're 15, um, seem black and white. Right. Uh, and I, I'm not against all of that. I think it's it's laudable. Um, but it's the old saying, you know, if you're not a Democrat when you're 20, you're, you have no heart. When you're not a Republican, when you're 40, you have no brain. <laughs> right. I'm waiting for her to grow up a little bit. And get a job. She can, yeah, she can be your husband's child for the beginning. And then at the end, <laughs> maybe she'll change. All right, Lily, Lily, how about you? How is this everything affecting you and your family? Well, I'll tell you, Ainsley, I had a pivotal moment last week when one of my sons looked at the TV and asked me, Mommy, is that in the United States or is it Venezuela? Wow. You know, you know, I'm Latin and and he understands what's happening in Venezuela. And I was like, oh, no, what's happening? It's the middle of the day. We're watching news together because we work from home together. Everybody's here. And that was really unsettling for me. I'm like, what is happening? We need to come together, rise above the political bickering. We need more homes like the other mom's home here that, that is able to have conversations. Mm -hmm. And just I never thought I was going to have to explain that to my son and, and try to make it the positive twist of, you know what? There's diversity of thought. We not all agree, but sh we should be able to be civil. And, and by no means we should have references of the greatest country, the United States, to other places that historically have not been places of freedom. So that was really unsettling for me, Ainsley. Yeah, we can all relate to that. And I mean, you've been on our show a lot talking about what your family has gone through and we see the images, but you, you know, your family has lived it. And so, you know, more than anyone that that give, gave me chills when you said that, that your son thought that was another country. I thought it was Venezuela. Uh, Kareth, you were in the movie No Safe Spaces. What are what's your opinion about silencing free speech or talking about doing that? And we're seeing what's happening on social media. 
Right. I, I'm not just a fan of free speech. I've actually dedicated a significant part of my life to it. I, I founded a nonprofit called Frame, the Foster Russell Alliance for Meaningful Expression, which takes programming that promotes free speech, inclusion, diversity of thought, and social change to college and university campuses, because that is definitely under threat. And I think we are in a very very dangerous situation right now with these big tech companies threatening to, well, pulling people off. Um, and here's the thing, what you're going to do is actually um, convert people who thought that they thought one way to another way, because they're going to wonder what you're trying to hide. Next thing, you're going to drive people who we should be looking at underground. And that's not good for anybody. It's certainly not good for our country. And it certainly does nothing to bring us together in a unified form as the United States. Mm -hmm. Kim, how does it affect you and your profession? Well, I, I mean, it's hard because I, I think censorship of any kind is terrible. But at the same time, what happened at the Capitol and the irresponsible use of, of media and social media is fueling a lot of the hatred that's running around the country. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm so torn. I think censorship is wrong at whenever it happens, even if I hate what the other person is saying. But I also want to find a way. It's, it's kind of the, the symptom, not the problem. I want to find a way that we can have heated conversations without um, having to, you know, say that we want to hang people or, right. or tear down the Capitol or, I mean, I think we have a much, much bigger problem than, than even the censorship would, would belie. So I don't know. I, it's, it's outrageous and hard. I mean, what I try to do in, in my political ads and in my work is have an intellectual conversation like I would have with my kid, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and try to take it down a notch. Um, I love a lot of Democrats. I, I, they're my dearest friends. Um, I love that we can have conversations. I wish that was the case across the country. I think most of us agree with you on that. I think more of us are in the middle, but it's just the fringe right and fringe left that, uh, you know, that they are writing Why some horrible things. things. I know, I know. All right, Lily, yeah. um, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. What's the future of the Republican Party now? Well, there is a time. This is the moment for reinvention, for showing that it is the party of opportunity and of law and order, and actually the one that can reach across the aisle. Because right now will be the moment to demonstrate that with the new administration. So I am hopeful. I'm hearing a different, you know, tone. But there is need to reset, and a reset not to erase the past, but look forward and come together. Truly, rising above politics because it's about the people. Kareth, Kim, Lily, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Ainsley. Thank you. You're welcome. Still ahead, thousands of National Guardsmen.